Today was the day me and my ex broke up. But <laughs> little does she know, it's workout Wednesday. If we ain't gonna work out, <laughs> her sister will be. I'm on demon time, boys. What's going on with y'all, big dog? And it is workout Wednesday. I hope that your day, phenomenal. But if it isn't, don't let what happened at the beginning of your day ruin the rest of your day. Today for Workout Wednesday, I actually want to talk to you guys about working out in general. Some people think that working out is only getting to the gym and getting those gains. But to be honest, working out is what you make it. In case you didn't know, the design of Workout Wednesday is to bring awareness to the Yu-Gi-Oh community about getting out there and improving their health, no matter what it is. Basically what I'm saying is, I don't care if you're hitting the gym. I don't care if you're walking around the neighborhood playing videos. They better be the Cali effects. Get your ass out there and work out, boy! Because that's what working out is about, bettering yourself and becoming a healthier version of you to improve yourself and make you too strong. Just like how these Yu-Gi-Oh strategies are insane right now. And today I'm going to be talking to you about what I think are the strongest Yu-Gi-Oh meta decks and why. That's right, big dog. We in mid-season, so we got to give an update to the meta. And of course, as a special thank you for helping me pay my Patreon, I'll be uploading some personal deck lists of these particular strategies. But without further ado, so... When making this video, I developed a simple criteria, my friend. In order for me to consider one of the best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, it just needed to be able to fit these three categories. Number one, the deck actually needs to be able to top a lot. Now, the more recent and consistent your tops are, I think the better, because as Yu-Gi-Oh change, the top decks will change and the top cards will change. And two. Your deck actually needs a legitimate reason why it is powerful. If the answer to this particular criteria is, My deck's so powerful, it can beat this deck because it's also good to my transitional property. I'm the best deck. That's not a good reason. Number three. Like on Kids Next Door, but better. While the main point of your deck should not be my deck can beat yours, it actually needs to be able to play well against the best decks in the game. My guy, if your deck has a super combo, that's fine, but if it get clapped up by everything else, then what are we doing here? With that being said, in the top five, I'm actually going to give it to two different decks. That way you can have a top six instead. See, your boy is always hooking you up with the sauce. I know, I'm the MVP. I got you, dog. I got you. I would say both Math Mech and Branded crack my top five strategy. I just couldn't give it to one because both of them are powerful in their own right. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. All right, cool, Branded, whatever. But Math Mech? How did Math Mech get here? Well, it's pretty simple. When I added your mom to the the equation and subtracted by the chances of you getting a girlfriend and then divided the time that you actually lost as opposed to watching these videos. Subscribe. Math Mech is super underrated right now, and I gotta give it up to the small world lines. Being able to search cards like Genko Seka to stop your opponent's back row heavy decks, that's really good in this format, but also being able to search a trusty Kaiju or Lava Girl. My guy! Bro, opponents just be making boards and I just be licking my lips and mmm, yeah, mm, there's a Kaiju that's gonna be searched for that. Branded is just an insane tempo heavy Yu Gi Oh deck that doesn't have any real weaknesses other than Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring and Dimensional barrier no i'm not i'm not upset at those two cards not at all no you're not gonna get me to flip out not gonna happen mm -mm, my friend i'm good on that i'm not flipping out my god why did i always have the ash it was extremely tough to decide which one of those will be my five and of course if you think a particular strategy should have gotten here instead be sure to let me know about that one too of course though that brings us to our number four i would easily say cash tira is one of the best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, but i will say that it's not the best deck in Yu-Gi-Oh. my guy what my friend it's official show's over cali's going crazy guys no more videos. Now, before you say Callie, you wild right now, I will admit that this is a bold take, but I actually have a fairly good reason. From the last YCS, Castira has made it abundantly clear that it is the best deck in the room, and players have been throwing every 
everything at it to be able to stop this deck and it's working it's working my friend it's actually working you want to completely zone lock us and the beard of primal beam you trying to play Yu Gi Oh? Ah, book of eclipse my guy face down face down you think you could just summon a rice heart pass <laughs> That's a good one. Kaijus are good now. Thank you. On the tier list, Cash Tier 100% fit the meta changer category because they define how this Yu-Gi-Oh meta is. But the problem with Cash Tier is since it does have such a huge target on its back, it's created the situation where it's in now where players actually have to have a big brain and play around so many situations to make this deck work really powerful. You ask me, that's a Catch-22, dog. You the best deck in Yu-Gi-Oh, but everybody coming for your cheeks and they getting clopped every round. On top of that, my biggest problem with catch tira is the elephant in the room there's way too many times this deck just flats out bricks there's cash tira blue eyes in this i really can't tell the difference sometimes wait you mean they're all the same one thing that i do like about cash tira is that no matter what inside of this format you can pretty much pick it up and always expect to get some decent results as long as you're playing the deck correctly because it actually does require skill now something that doesn't require skill in this card game is playing a ton of Yu-Gi-Oh floodgates and what i have at my number three i mean <laughs> yeah you could do that my guy you do not have to play floodgates to be good you do not have to enter the dark side you can be wholesome and strong yeah i know but floodgates they exist i play them labyrinth can be one of the most skillful decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, effectively using your normal trap cards to be able to get rid of some of your opponent's biggest threats while also triggering your labyrinth effects it can also be that same degenerate deck that plays skill drain goes and match and rival warlords in the same build oh yeah and players are now playing Red Eyes Dark Dragoon too. Mommy Milkers is literally the dating market out there. There are some really great girls that you want to get with, but you keep getting the OnlyFans girls. And by OnlyFans, I mean you keep subscribing to their OnlyFans because imagine you getting a girl. I mean, technically, that could be considered your girlfriend. You are paying for, and um, I think that was a date. Ironically enough, what also makes Labyrinth such a powerful deck is not only being able to search cards like Dimensional Barrier, but also the ability to take out all of your opponent's spell or trap cards through Eradicator Epidemic Virus. It actually allows it to be able to keep pace with the number two strategy on this list in Runic Notoria. My guy is getting to that stage of the game right now where Runic cards just might be the hero. And um, it's not fun. I don't like it. I fucking hate Runic cards. But Notoria? can't be mad now some players may say that i have notoria way too high but this deck has been consistently topping over the course of the format and is starting to show even more presence because of the runic cards who would have guessed being able to resolve a runic fountain to draw three would get you so far in the game and all you gotta do is give up the battle phase that you might not need because your monsters are way too oppressive anyways it's actually really starting to come up that Naturia can Synchro Summon into Naturia Beast and Barkeon. Very powerful spell and trap removal that prevents your opponent from using cards like Evenly Match, Triple Tactics Thrust, Book of Eclipse, you know, the good cards. But also since one card starters like Naturia Camellia and Naturia Mole Cricket get you into full combo, giving you the option to be able to not only Synchro Summon and Link with your Runic cards to make some really cool monsters, it can give you some big body outs like Sword Soul Shinging and Better on the Floor. Oh man, yeah, that, that's really cool spell and trap removal and big body chungus guys that just ruined my life thank you but if all else fails just press option b playing Yu-Gi-Oh. trying to reduce my life points to zero i'm gonna deck you out and lastly a deck that has been climbing the ranks <laughs> sprite Like Sprite, double U is like Kai. Blue spray drip gotta be cold. Else might flow make a toad flow. And if you guys want to know exactly where I got that video from, it's actually me and my boy MDC rapping over that beat. I'll leave the link down below in the comment section as well as the description. But the reason why I have Sprite down as my number one is because it's so good against a lot of the cards being popularly played in this format. The Beard of Primal Being don't mean nothing if you resolve the effect of your gigantic Sprite. As Blossom and Joyous Spring and Infinite Impermanence? <laughs> what are those? Kaijus and Lava Golem are cute. Now, what are you going to do with all these face down cards and these hand traps that I play? 
Sprite is just simply one of the more versatile decks in this format, and while it doesn't make a huge overwhelming board that you can't beat, it actually does enough every single turn to stay in the game, and has multiple variants that have topped over the course of this format, like Adventure and Runic. Runicking the game. There's even pure versions more focused on Totally Awesome, but I don't know, it could be just Master Duel players picking up Sprite because they finally got it alongside of a brain. Kinda. Of course, as you know, I did snub a ton of Yu-Gi-Oh decks like Trap Tricks, like Sword Soul and Dark World. If you guys have a reason why you think that one of those strategies should be in the top five instead of these other five, I can't wait to hear what you have to say. But until then, if you want to catch more amazing Kali Effect content and want to know exactly where I put some of those strategies, consider checking out my meta tier list or some of my other amazing content as I'll catch you on the next video.